est sauvé à Valia Djombu à Mayevo. Second vice. Also seated is the chairman of today's occasion. He is our 17th president and he goes by the name Estes Sovia and Valua Asiwaju Dosu Fat Dosu Fatoku. Also seated is the speaker for today. He is our 18th president in the person of Estes Sovia and Valua Chief Ochendo. A Mecca Honora, the pastor. Also seated is the board chairman and the 15th president of our institution, S.T. Sobe and Valia Mweke Mezurike. Also seated is the chairman of the Privileges Committee and the 22nd president of our institution, S.T. Sobe and Valia B.J. Patuola. Ajayi. Also seated or stepped out to is himself is our special guest of the day, Engineer Olumu Iwa Alade Ajibola. Please let's appreciate the We also like to recognize the presence of all members of council here seated. May I respectfully request that you stand up and take a bow? Members of council, please stand up and take a bow. Please let's appreciate this. We also have seated fellows of our institution here. My request that you all stand up and take a bow. All fellows of the institution here seated, please stand up and take a bow. Thank you. We also like to appreciate especially the inductees for today. My request that all inductees here seated should please stand up and take a bow. All in of teeth. All in. Please, let's appreciate this group, please. Let's appreciate it. Thank you so much. Please be seated. We also like to appreciate especially all our guests, including those that came with in of teeth. All guests here, please. Kindly rise up and take a bow. All guests. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We also like to appreciate all the associates of the institution that are here today. Please, if you're here, do stand up and take a bow to you. At least you're learning the next stage you're going into. Are they here? Okay. Thank you. We move on. Moving forward. As more persons arrive that we need to recognize them, and because of this, we'll be doing that. Um, we'll start with the national anthem, and when we are done with that, we'll move into the opening prayer. But before then, I'd like us to turn to the program. Um, Immediately after number seven, we just want to make some a bit of an adjustment. Immediately after number seven, what you might call seven B will be a good way message by the board chairman. You can call that seven B a good way message by the board chairman. So if um, We're ready. Could we please all stand up as we take the national anthem? <laughs>
Foundation. I'd like to call to our troops, Ire Kukuri, a fellow of our institution, a woman plus as he steps forward for our opening prayer. Thank God. We thank you for today. Thank you for this gathering. For giving us here an opportunity to assemble and discuss hold a forum for our first, our first, our first uh, president of the institution, Let's Egbe Young. We thank you. Come and be with us. Come and stay with us. Come and guide all the delegations in this place. So that at the end of the day, we have cause to give you thanks and glory. Oh, we pray to Christ our Lord. Amen. Come on, Amen. Amen. Without much ado, distinguished noble colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call to the podium the Chairman of Council, the President and Commander in Chief of the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, Estate Surveyor and Valuers, Sir Roland Eina Abonta. I think he deserves a standing applause. I think he deserves that. This is our President. Thank you very much. My first vice president, Chief Sir Manuel Wike, Ocas Wike. The second vice president, Estes Sovereign Valuer Jambul Amayabo. The chairman of this occasion, our beloved past president. Estes Sovereign and Valua Asewaju Dosu Fatoki. Fatoki, forgive me. The chairman of Eswabon, the 15th president of our institution, the regulatory board for Estes Surveyors and Valuas in Nigeria. Estes Sovereign and Valua Mweke Umezurike. The speaker for today, our past president, 18th president of our institution, Estes Surveyor and Valua, Chief Emeka Honora. The special guest for this special occasion, the president of presidents in Nigeria within the professional circle. The president of APPN and past president of Nigerian Society of Engineers, Engineer Ulumuiwa Alade Ajibola. You are welcome, sir. Our 22nd president and the immediate past president of our great institution and Chairman of Privileges Committee, the committee that have uh, prepared the fellows to be inducted today, Estes Surveyor and Valois, B.J. Patuola Jai. You're welcome, sir. Please, if your hands are free, don't threaten to clap. Feel free to clap. Members of the Board of Trustees of the institution, members of Ezra Bonds in our midst, members of the National Council of our institution, elected, newly elected fellows on whose account we are gathered here today, fellows of the institution, associates of the institution, probationers and students in our midst, gentlemen of the press. It's a great pleasure to have us all here today for this particular August occasion. I am most delighted to welcome you to this landmark event of the 25th JW Ekbe Young Lecture and the 2019 Fellows Induction of our great institution. 
This day's dual event brings back to memory the hard work and sacrifices of our founding fathers, which brought about the establishment of our noble profession, and on the other hand, offers the ample opportunity of celebrating and inducting another set of accomplished and distinguished estate surveyors and valuers into the prestigious membership grade of fellows of the institution. Time will fail me to narrate the genesis of this profession in this short speech, but the profile of the institution in our brochure captures it all. However, it is of remarkable note to state here that in order to bring this profession to Nigeria, most of our founding fathers had to travel for days and weeks by sea vessels to UK to study the course, made great success of their study, and had job opportunities in UK, but chose to return home to serve their father's land, Nigeria. This is an uncommon patriotism, which is not easily found today. The man, estate surveyor and valuer John W. Epeyon, was exemplary among his peers with scholastic and professional excellence that brought him to be the very first president of our great institution. Distinguished audience, we remember him today for laying such a solid foundation upon which many, many others have built, upon which I am currently building, and yet many more will continue to build on that foundation. I thought we should appreciate our late past president's effort. The strength of this institution is in our unity and indivisibility as a profession. Permit me to invite this distinguished audience to please rise on your feet as we salute the past leaders of our profession while the representatives or the representative of a young family sit down and of course our past president and past national council chairman please sit down as we pay you this respect past president can you please resume your seat can we put our hands together to appreciate the labor of service of these men thank you very much can we please resume our seat permit me at this juncture to invite the chairman of the board of trustees the direct boss of the president of the institution to come to the high table so that he will hear me well i think he's too far away from me can we appreciate estate surveyor and valuer henshaw to come to the high table can we appreciate him? the chairman of board of trustees Thank you for the current management committee of our institution is seeking for more ways of appreciating our past leaders for their labors of service. My distinguished and accomplished 2019 set of fellows, I congratulate you and I am very proud of you for your love and service to the profession. I thought you would clap for yourself, even if nobody wants to clap for you. I sincerely congratulate you and appreciate you. You profoundly demonstrated this during your appearance in the Bauchi Council meeting. It was unprecedented and exemplary for other upcoming fellows. If your hands are free, please clap for yourself and let's join to appreciate this set of fellows. There is a good saying that the reward for every hard work is more work. As we induct you today as fellows, we are launching you into more work in the institution. Please continue to render your selfless services 
without looking back. At about 50 years of our existence as a professional body, we have made some good progress. But the gap between where we ought to be and where we are today is still very wide. My prayer is that God will use you, me and others, to bridge that gap. Without being a critic of my generation, permit me to observe here that we have not been able to pass our tradition of nobility to the younger generation of estate surveyors and valuers in terms of professional ethics, character, and conduct. And as such, we have continued to manage the challenges of indiscipline and compliance with ethics and standards. These have increased in no small measure the negative perception of our profession by the public and have even led to usurpation of our traditional functions by our contemporary. contemporary. I therefore call on you new fellows and old ones alike to join hands in mentoring and bringing up younger estate surveyors and valuers to imbibe our tradition of nobility in conduct and character. I also call on all fellows in both private and public practices to create opportunities and employ the younger estate surveyors and valuers for positive succession in this profession. Truly, it is a day of celebration for our new fellows and the institution. So let's celebrate as I indulge our special guests, friends and relations to join us in celebrating our new fellows. You are welcome and thanks for listening. Long live Federal Republic of Nigeria. Long live Nigerian institution of estate surveyors and valuers. Thank you very much. I think we should do better for our president. Thank you very much. Next on our program, is the opening remark from the chairman of the occasion is no other person than Estes of your and Valua Ashiwaju Dosu Fatoku. You're welcome to the podium. Good morning, my noble colleagues. Starting from the president, his vices, and the distinguished gentlemen on the high table, the inductees of today, and other guests. Of course, I'm not leaving the band people aside because you are looking out to be joyous today. Uh, let me start on congratulatory note. And there are three sets of people I want to congratulate today. The first, the inductees, obviously, for attaining the zenith of their profession. Uh, the second set is the founding fathers of this profession, who in their thoughtfulness instituted this uh, memorial lecture for our first president, uh, John Wood Epeyong. And the third person I want to congratulate is the president, the current president, the management team and the national council. Why do I want to congratulate them? If you meet a system and you try you work hard to sustain the system and improve on it, uh, honestly, you deserve congratulations. Please, a round of applause. As noted by the President, today is a day of double event. The induction and the memorial lecture. The two are interrelated in a way. 
because they are related to the development of approbation. The first about the induction relates to facilitating the appropriate and quality human capital development for the profession, while the second is about the promotion of, of the profession. Now, starting with the doctor, I think I cannot say it more than what the President has captured in his report. I won't congratulate you. I just want to remind you you are now at the zenith of your profession. If you want to use the terminology in the armed forces, we say now you are the you are general of the profession, the air marshal of the profession, the rear admiral of the profession. While climbing up, I saw the list of professional service areas which the institution has developed. I think there are 16 of them. Uh, honestly, as a fellow, you must have a good grasp of all these areas. Even though you are going to specialize in some of them, you should be able to talk authoritatively on them. Now that you are fellows, if you check your DNA, we should find estate manager in that DNA. And so, to whom much is given, much is expected. In terms of ethics, in terms of activities, you must undertake all things that edify this profession as from today, as fellows. Once more, I wish you well, and I want to advise that while you are passionate about the profession, this should not mean that you cannot diversify. Because diversification is a new dictate of the modern economy. You can diversify vertically and horizontally. In the past, our seniors used to admonish us that don't do anything other than ethic management. The reality of today's economy is that you need to diversify. In fact, Nigeria is suffering for not diversifying its economy over the years. Of course, when we talk of horizontal diversification, you can go into property development. And in Abuja here, we are happy that some of our colleagues uh, is uh, Belo here, is down there, and uh, in Lagos. I've forgotten the name of that gentleman who are known Lekiasis, many of his guests. Dalusu, that's what thank you very much. So these are part and parcel of uh, horizontal uh, diversification. Of course, there's only stopping us too, because we must be active participants in the, today's economy. Vertical diversification will take in terms of, you know, engaging in portfolio, portfolio investment. Uh, I read a book, it's autobiography of a uh, hard-working and renowned lawyer, commercial lawyer in the US, Chief Chris Ogubanjo. Honestly, I would recommend that book to every member of this profession. He started as a lawyer and is still a lawyer. Very successful lawyer, commercial lawyer, for that matter. But he diversified into investing in industries, even that are not related to any law or to that matter. There are studies stopping us. So while you are passionate about estate management and you will do nothing to hurt the profession, in terms of ethics and in terms of practice, practice uh, there are other rooms for which you can use your talent. That's so much for a doctor uh, of today. I wish you well. For the lecture of today, 
our president has captured the rationale behind this lecture. Suffice for me to say and to state that the first, the first president, John Wood Ever Young, was a pioneer in the real sense of it. And of course, you know, as a pioneer, it is often difficult. So for our founding fathers to have thought that it should be appreciated and be mortalized by this uh, lecture series, I think it is worth it. And I want to thank our founding fathers. We want to clap, clap, please. Of course, that is a major objective of the lecture to immortalize our pioneer uh, first president. The other objective, of course, is to sensitize and to have a view on the relevance of the profession. Year in, year out, over the past 25 years, various topics have been considered. Of course, looking at uh, page 16 of the program with us, of course, I want to draw the attention of Mr. President to the fact that the last lecture was not captured, the, you know, delivered by my humble self of facility management and economic development, it was omitted. Mr. President, well, I think, uh, thank you very much, thank you very much. We can categorize all those topics into two areas of sensitivity. One, external sensitization, and secondly, internal sensitization. The external one is our profession and the society. Are we relevant? How can we make the society and the profession more relevant? These are the uh, you know, areas which this group of topics are. The other one is internal sensitization. That is looking at ourselves, we the practitioner, the professional. And it is under this category that today's uh, lecture falls, which is, please hold it. Impairing, yes. Prospects and challenges. Yes, it's likely to satisfy us. Are we doing enough? Can our profession survive this millennium? What are the gaps that should be filled? Our methodology relevant, unassailable, and, and is the way we practice the profession organizational wise. Is it the correct one? Can we survive on, team, on it? And of course, the opportunities that are banned within the environment. So that's the focus of these second groups of uh, lecture series. Of course, as to today's uh, uh, guest speaker, of course, Ochendu has always been my only mate. When I was uh, first vice, he was the second vice. And when I was president, he was the first vice. Because that is the reversal of road today. While he's the guest speaker, I'm directing to ensure that you people listen to his lecture. <laughs> I believe that if you do justice to this topic. Number one, estate management is an environmental discipline. And I note that our guest speaker today happens to be one of the people who studied estate management abroad. I'm sure if we brought, if we bring, we bring to beer, his experience, the environment here and in Nigeria. So we are here for a very good lecture. Mr. President and people on the high table, noble colleagues, don't let me pre pre preempt him. Let us adjust our dresses and let's listen to Chenu as he delivers them to. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. Can we please put our hands together again for Ashiwaju Dusu Patuku for that wonderful opening remark? Why the opening remark from the chairman of the occasion was ongoing? Another eminent personality in our institution walked in. In person of the 20th president of our institution, I'm talking of Esti Sovio and Valua Emeka DLA. Thank you so much. You're welcome to our minister, sir. Please, the Honorary National Public Secretary has actually announced a little amendment in the program. Esti Sovio and Valua. Uweke Mizruke, that is the chairman of the board. I'm talking of the Estates of Yours and Valuers Registration Board. He is invited to the podium to give his goodwill message. You're welcome, sir. <laughs> Because any time we fail to do that, 
we are moving towards the death of the profession, which I'm sure nobody will want to happen in his or her lifetime. So I join the president in encouraging us to aspire for the higher standards of practice. I'd like to use this opportunity to inform us about one or two things that happened in the profession last year, 2018. I'm sure many of us already know about the highly improved adhesive tanks, which have come into use on the 1st of January, 2019. It is important that we as estate servants and valuers distinguish ourselves from others in the use of the stamps. Also, because we are very much concerned about the um, ethics the board has just created a new office in the compliance and monitoring of our professional practice. This office is not that of the policeman, but it's an office that is interested to make sure, in fact, to assist us practice the way we ought to practice. So, in the coming months, you will be seeing the board or representative of the board, possibly in the, in the person of the compliance and monitoring officer, coming across to you, desiring to know what problems, if any, that you are having, maintaining high standards. It's not the desire of the board to punish anybody. But first of all, it's the desire of the board to assist us to move up in the standards of our practices. And so if you see us coming, we are not coming to uh, look at what you are doing as police but we are coming to look at how we can assist you to do the right thing. As I'm sure you must have heard, in the course of last year, towards the end of last year, in fact, in October last year, the State Service and Valuers Restriction Board of Nigeria, your board, was admi uh, admitted as an institutional member of the International Graduation Standards Council. That imposes a lot of responsibility on the board. And I do assure you that the board will not shy away from that responsibility which that imposes on it. We will do our best to make sure that we don't fail you, that we don't fail those that we serve. You'll also realize that towards the end of the year, the board launched for use the Nigeria Valuation Standards, codenamed the Green Book. We will expect you to get acquainted with the Green Book. It may be that not everybody would wish to be Green Book compliant. But I'd like to assure you that the board will live up to its responsibility in that regard in holding up and presenting only those who are Green Book compliant when the need arises. Copies of the Green Book are available for you to procure and um, 
get acquainted with. It's not, it's not, it's not very expensive. It's only 5,000 naira a copy. And uh, when you realize that it incorporates the IVS 2017, as well as the Red Book of the RICS, you know that this is coming to you at a very cheap price. I encourage you to get a copy of the Green Book, and not just getting a copy, to acquaint yourself with the provisions of the Green Book. Soon from now, we are going to make strenuous effort to make sure that all those who are interested get to understand the Green Book the way we ought to do. Because it's the only way you understand that you'll be able to implement what is there. We are going to create opportunities for this to be done. And we expect that you will not miss any opportunity to make sure that you are up to date. After all these efforts, let me say that if anybody makes up his or her mind not to flow along, well, we won't have any choice but to go along without that person. I'm sure nobody will want to be left behind. This is not the lecture for today. What I'm just required to do is to give a goodwill message. And I want to say, Mr. President, that as we have been saying in the past, we should always take the opportunity of this celebration to receive persons who are not business owners and values, the users of our services, the stakeholders in this industry. Let them come. I'm sure that you have a good uh, dose of uh, breast milk in our midst who will be able to carry what is happening here today to the Nigerian public. Because it's not good enough for us to come and talk to ourselves by ourselves. And not many people will know what we are doing. I'd like to end by encouraging us, those who are here, please encourage your friends and colleagues who are not here to make the John Wood Epenyong Lecture a must every year. It normally happens in February, but I'm sure we all understand why, why the management decided to move it forward. February is a critical month this year. And I want to congratulate the management for bringing this event to January so that we don't put it at a time where people will have excuse for not attending. Those who are not here, as far as I'm concerned, do not have uh, any excuse for not attending. Those who are here, please make the good use of your presence here. Let it not just be you are coming, whatever you are going to hear today, hear today you, as you are going, you drop it here. Whatever you hear, which will enable us to keep moving up, please let it spread. And God will bless all of us. Thank you for the opportunity. Please let's do, let's do better than that. This is a special announcement. For those of us, our members and special guests and inductees, once you drove in and park within the premises of the hotel, please go and revalidate. It is very important, we just got that information now. You have to revalidate and tell them categorically that you are here for this event. The speaker for today, doing that, doing that will be the Estes of your Anvalua, Frank. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please a round of applause for all our fellows that are getting inducted today. Especially, we want to recognize all the spouses of the fellow inductees. I've been told to really recognize men and women that have stood with their spouses all these years while practicing. Please a round of applause for our wives and our husbands here, please. Somebody said, be, be, beside every successful estate surveyor and valuer is a good wife or husband. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of our institution, today is a landmark event in our institution and history. We have here today a man that is a University of London trained civil engineer. He's the Agbaki of Ileife and the 16th president of the Institution of Professional Bodies in Nigeria. He obtained his master's degree in highway and traffic engineering construction management from the University of Birmingham. He has since gone to attend many other professional development courses, including the Harvard Business School, Chief Ajibola, an astute professional and a firm believer in Nigerian local content and entrepreneurship, has recorded stellar professional career ever since starting as a pupilage at the Urban District Council of Baselden, Newtown, Essex, England, to co-founded Intercon Partnership Limited, which has now become a leading consulting engineering firm in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, the Agbaki of Ife has served the engineering profession in various capacities in the Nigerian Society of Engineers, Essen and Corrin over the past three decades and ultimately President of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. He is the President of President of Professional Bodies of Nigeria, our special guest of honor today, Your Excellencies, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Eng Chief Engineer Olumuyiwa Alade Ajibola, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers. Please a round of applause for him and the Agbaki of Ife. Yes, yes, yes. Please a round of applause for you, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. The President of the Nigerian Institution of Estates, Surveyors and Valuers, past presidents, and the management. I will yield the other protocol as Mr. President has established. But I'm not standing on the protocol because it may fall. I will stand by the protocol. It's my pleasure to be here this morning in the midst of very astute professionals of our nation and those that have contributed immensely to the development and growth of our nation to date. This event, in honor of uh, ESV FAO, a very distinguished Estee Sovio and the first president of this institution, is the most appropriate device for honoring those of our professional heroes who served the profession selflessly and made the initial sacrificial impact by setting the profession running during their days. May his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. The reason why I say it's a good device is that knowledge is the king pin of the professions, the first pillar, followed by experience and skills, and then the acquisition of the main attributes of a professional, a true professional, which are ethics and integrity. Those that will be inducted as fellows today are therefore rising to the higher level of the attributes of ethics and, profession, uh, and, and integrity. 
as all the speakers before me have mentioned. The lecture, therefore, will add to knowledge. In fact, the lecture confirms that this institution is living up to its billing as a living profession. The topic, which indeed is very interesting, the estate surveyor and valuer in Perry. I want to admit that I am very, very uh, impressed by those who chose this topic because it applies. It applies. In fact, I'd like to read it in this way: the Nigerian professionals in Perry. This indeed is what is happening at this time. The Nigerian professionals have been sidelined and there are a lot of issues that could have been otherwise resolved in a better manner had the professionals been in the scheme of things. I want to say that the lecturer also is a special person whom I've known for over 10 years and uh, is someone who is very imaginative. What we need today is disruption. Disruption. I'm sure you've had those words, I mean that, that expression several times over. Indeed, I expect that this topic is going to create a kind of imaginative way of the professions getting out of this pairing that we find ourselves. Diversification has been mentioned. And then I am sure that if we apply our professional minds to uh, creative means, of making our professions to subsist, then we shall continue to be in reckoning. The knowledge to be gained is very important and will be useful throughout our professional life. I congratulate the President, Estes of Yelsa, Roland Abonja, uh, and his team uh, and proudly commend his contribution to the uh, uh, APBN. That means the contribution of the NIESB to the APBN, the Association of Professional Bodies of Nigeria. I must let you know because some, most of the time, a lot of our members do not know what this association is all about. The association comprises all the key professions in Nigeria which have recognition with government either through karma or through charter or other laws. And these professions are coming together, they've come together to find their voice. A big voice that is needed in the policy space of our nation. A big voice that is currently absent from the policy space of our nation and without which our nation can move significantly forward. I want to say that uh, the, at this time all hands must be on deck to be able to ensure that the professions are not shortchanged. The APBM was envisioned as the third leg of the tripod of the private sector, namely Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, NASIMA, and of course the APBM. Now, this 
uh, very important institutions, when they look at policies, they usually come out with the best of the solutions from the policies. Indeed, we look out, we look up to all of us, all the distinguished NIESB uh, practitioners and other professions for very useful advice to help us to serve the professions better so that in the future we will not be wiped out of the system of our country. I want to say now that while congratulating those that are coming in as uh, fellows, they should live up to the responsibility of a professional, a true professional, and they must inculcate the attributes of ethics and integrity. Well, I congratulate all and wish you a wonderful, wonderful outing today. Thank you very much. Please a round of applause for our special guest of honor, Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Is the Estate Surveyor and Valua Imperial Challenges and Prospects. Thank you. The kernel of this paper is that the Estate Surveyor and Valua is in serious danger of professional irrelevance in Nigeria unless concerted efforts are taken to save the great situation. This may sound alarming to some, of, some, to some people, but sadly that is the reality as may become evident at the end, at the, at the end of this discussion. Of course, looking from the outside, The society will see some very prosperous looking surveyors. Amongst them, in this, in terms of seniority, uh, people like um, Gesh Henshaw, <laughs> people like Chidan Ogete, Uludare Bello, and my friend Mekele, Victor Alange, Chike Guadua, and some others. Among the up and coming young ones that are also doing well, you will see the youngest of Tumba among that degree, Victor Yeye. You will also see our first vice president, who is to become president very soon, in my weekend. Amen, you will see Keno Onwara and some others. And so the picture people see from outside is that estate surveillance and bachelors are doing very well. But I dare say, that 90, up to 90% of estate surveyors are hurting. The system has marginalized us. We also have also played some roles in marginalizing ourselves. But let, let us go on and see how the estate surveyor and Valua is positioned in reality. Um, I would like to use my personal example. I returned to Nigeria in 1985 after finishing my tertiary education in the UK. During that period, we had what they were called structural adjustment program of the then former president um, IB, IB, IBB, Barangida. At the time, the economy started feeling the pinch of mismanagement of the previous years. You all will remember that Nigeria enjoyed oil boom in the 70s. To the extent that a one-time military president was allegedly to have said 
that the problem Nigeria has is how to spend money, not how to make it. Before the advent of um, Babangira administration, the Naira exchange rate with the dollar was one dollar to 0.894 Naira. But there was inflation, there was unemployment. But at that time, as a young surveyor, it appeared that the SS surveillance and violence were doing well. After my youth service, I, I took up employment with Night Frank and Rotley. That was in, uh, I think, February 1987. The firm was doing well, the jobs were flowing, we were busy in all aspects. Night Frank was not only doing valuation, they were doing management, they were doing project management. They were even doing agricultural farm services. And I was fortunate to be there. I was in valuation and development department. I traveled to Sierra Leone and Central African Republic to conduct valuations for PZ. And we were involved in so many blue sheep and the cop Olympic public organization valuation of the assets. Those were the proud era of our profession. And the estate of Ayan Balea was the envy of other professionals in the built, of, the built environment. Because you know, when there is economic problem, the first industry to be hit is the building industry. But luckily for us as estates of Ayan Balea, we are not just involved in building pre development, but we're also involved after development. So the, our brothers, our professional colleagues in the industry, who are mainly involved in the construction aspect of the profession, felt the pinch of economic depression. Even at the time, when, we, when the, the, the country was feeling that Nigeria is in depression. Our colleagues, our senior colleagues then used to tell us about the fabulous stories that in the seven days that there was zero unemployment for graduate states of Wales and Banduas. That immediately you are graduating and you are immediately after your youth service, you are offered a job even with a car. Those were the glorious years. But after the oil boom, we entered the oil dome years. And that is the period where we are today. Today, um, unemployment is at 23.1% at the third quarter of 2018. The Naira exchange value with major currencies of the world is now at its lowest level. It is 6.9 million people are living in extreme poverty. Major industrial concerns, which, used, which previously used to provide regular valuation jobs to the profession, have either gone under or they have relocated abroad. You will also remember that in those days, the Federal Housing Authority and the Federal Mortgage Bank were very, very active in the industry. But today, you know their situation. So, noble colleagues, with the shrinking opportunities and growing number of both registered practicing firms and individuals, coupled with the cultural competitions from local and foreign professionals and banks, and the unsavory government policies and laws have conspired to whittle down the once vast exclusive professional terrain of the essence of Surveyor and Valuer, thereby putting the essence of Surveyor and Valuer in a perilous situation. Now let us look into more details about some of the challenges that the essence of Surveyor and Valuer currently faces. The 
biggest problem in the, in the society is to define who is an estate surveyor and valuer. If you go out in the society and you say you are an estate surveyor and valuer, the chances are you will be described as an estate agent or as an estate manager. And if you are lucky, among the knowledgeable ones who say you are an estate valuer, but no, it will be very difficult to find somebody who really can tell you all the core areas and estates of yours and valuers are involved. And maybe that is why our professional colleagues in other professions tend to deride us by saying that we are jack of all trades and master of none built industry that has knowledge of other professions in the built industry. And we also have the, 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 the management capability to bring together other professionals. But I don't know, maybe because of the need for quick money. You know, project management takes time. So I'd like to encourage us, some of us who are still involved in project management, like Evita Longe, um, um, and so many others, and some others, not so many, some, some others. I'd like to encourage you, please try to show your skill, and try to mentor others who are not in, into it, to it so that they can see the need for it. Even as a young survey in Night Frank, I did a block of flats in Victoria Land for the late General Inienga. So, what is happening today is something that I cannot explain. To encourage us to come together, it is for our interest as a profession, not, not just for the firm, that it will help to grow and do better, but also as a profession. Then research and development. Indeed, the instance of where I'm valuer, <laughs> if you ask me, it's almost like a magician. Why do I say so? In the UK and even elsewhere, the valuer has access to records to information, to data, to do his work. Sometime last year, in anticipation of a job that I was expecting, a job that will involve valuation of a jet, I started doing some research. And it took me to an organization in Canada. And I was surprised the level of information available to the valuer who is involved in marina, they call it marina there, marina valuation. The detail that they provide, both for the debt and the, and so on, you know, so much information that all the valuer requires to do is to take the information, apply some judgment, and come to a well-considered valuation. But here, you want to value a jetty. You know, you don't know the debt, you may not have, you may not have the original drawing to know the depths and so on. So I actually want to applaud the state surveillance and valors in Nigeria. They are really doing very well with, based on the information that are available to us. Don't you want to clap for yourself? It is tough to be an instance of and value here. And I want to also commend the, the institution um, some years back, the institution uh, commissioned a committee that came up with some um, start, uh, records. And uh, that record, I tell you, is still very useful, even up to today. But it needs updating. We should take it as a major thing that the institution must do. Since the big firms in Nigeria are now helping the profession by way of R&D, I always like to refer to the UK because I trained there. In the UK, 
NIFA and Utley and so many other big firms. They provide regular information on market trends, regular on yields, on rentals, and what have you, free of charge to the society. So since we don't have such happening here, we must invest heavily in research and development because that is the only way to ensure that we improve our valuation. In, the, in North America, you have multiple listing services. There you get a lot of information to assist you. In fact, um, I was, somebody was, putting, was showing me how they do valuation, and the other is very wide. Then, we need to participate in politics. In Nigeria, it's like it's winners take all. And if you are not involved in politics, your profession will suffer. We have never had an estate surveyor who is a minister. We have never had an estate surveyor who is a governor. We are hoping to have one in Upper uh, um, right? We are hoping to have one there. Um, even ordinary local government chairman. I don't know how many instance of yours and values have been looking at government chairman. Let me tell you a small story about my my experience as local government chairman. When I was chairman, I requested to find out um, who is in the valuation department, valuation office. And the one rickety man showed up. <laughs> He knows nothing about, all he knows is how to send the um, demand notice. How he comes up with that demand notice is left to his conjecture. <laughs> Similarly, even, even the legal section, even though that is not a major concern to me, one person showed up and said he's a litigation officer. He's not a lawyer. <laughs> so a lot of things are going wrong. A lot of things are going wrong. We have, seven, we have 774 local governments in Nigeria. Imagine if every one of them has a valuation office. We will not have enough qualified people to fill up those places. And then you have land administration officers in, in the whole ministries of uh, lands in the, in, in, this, in, in the country. This is our small number of less than 6,000 will not go anywhere. But the problem is that if you are not there, the people that will decide your fate will decide it the way it favors them. That is why we need to go into politics. Don't don't look at yourself and say, ah, because I'm a state surveyor, I must be, I must go to Senate. Or I must be governor. Any level is useful. Even House of Assembly, even as a councillor. No, no level is useless. Every level in politics is useful. Even, even, if, even if just to give you information. As chairman, elected chairman, you would expect that you have control over your funds. But like I said earlier, the governors have taken over everything. As chairman, I have no access to the fund you, you see published in the newspaper coming to my local government. They have what they call JAC, Joint Allocation Committee, that the state governor appoints the chairman and virtually everybody there. And the, it is there they decide what happens to your funds. They will apply those funds to things that, has nothing to, that have nothing to do with your local government. And at the end of the day, they tell you the money is finished. So, Towards the end of my tenure, it was a two years tenure, towards the end of my tenure, after one year, I said, how can I leave this place without making any impact? What will I tell my constituents? What will I even tell you, my colleagues, that I went to do there? So I decided to build a market. The market in my village was abandoned for 23 years. 
they had, my community had signed agreement with the local government for joint development. But due to politics at the time, I don't know what happened, they abandoned it. And the place became a den of criminals. The place covered some parts of it were used as farmland. And I decided to do something with it. And so I got approval from the government and from the <coughs> council to revive that partnership, which I couldn't even find the agreement. <laughs> So I had to call my community and we renegotiated. And um, I went into it. And what did I do? We designed the market the way we felt would serve the purpose. And then uh, we started giving allocations, land allocations, on the agreement that the developer or the subscriber would develop and the council will provide the professional services. So we did this position. And you won't believe it. The deputy governor flagged up the project on 23rd December 2015. By July 2016, when I left office, the project was 95% completed. Yeah. Without local government or state funding it. How did I do it? We had what we call non-refundable application fee of 10,000 naira for a shop. And we, we have about 1,500 shops of different kinds. And so we raised some money from it. We also have what we call land um, allocation fee. That one too was 10,000. So, very low at the end of the day, because if you look at what they collect elsewhere, but I needed to make it attractive for the investors to come. I said, come. Some of them, I called personally. Those who did plaza, we had plazas, and then we had the other ones that one, two, three persons can subscribe. And then we raised money from those subscriptions, and we used it to provide the infrastructure which the local government will have provided. We use a dedicated account for, for it. And I supervised it personally, apart from the other engineers that were with me. I, every day, Monday to Saturday, I was on site. Once I report to office and do one or two things, I go there and make sure. Unfortunately, I uh, didn't have enough time to bring you the pictures, but those who have been, those who are from Anambra State and those who apply Enugu on Nature Road, please look at um, um, the project is along the express road. It is the one of the best of its kind in Anambra State. In conclusion, you came at the right time to <laughs> remind me. In conclusion, the real estate profession in Nigeria is is not highly developed, as would be expected from a country with the kind of resources that we have. As of second, second quarter of 2018, real estate only contributed 6.83% of the Nigerian GDP. So that shows there is still room for improvement. So the, there is good prospects for the profession. Uh, those colleagues who felt frightened by the topic I chose to speak on today, need not worry. There is a big prospect for this profession, but all I'm doing today is to bring certain issues to the front burner. Issues that will help us to develop our profession better and so that our services to our clients are also very much improved. Thank you very much for listening. He deserves a standing ovation, ladies and gentlemen. Our guest speaker, always worth listening to. A man of many sides, which is the one. And as a surveyor, a politician, a businessman, 
a wise man by his school arrangement. Please a round of applause again for him. Thank you very much, sir. Very practical and very straight to the point. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, our president, members of the high table inductees and noble colleagues, we want to strongly recognize the president, president of the president of the Nigerian Institution of Town Planners, Town Planner Lekwa Esuta. Please a round of applause for him. You are welcome, sir. Also here with us today, a friend of the institution, we have the national chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Water Engineers, Niwe Engineer Adekola Ogundayo, a fellow of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, and also a fellow of the Nigerian Institute of Waterways Engineers. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to, I've been told, to fully recognize, I've been told that charity begins at home. All our people from Kaduna, I was trained in Kaduna, in Kaduna Polytechnic, a proud product of Kaduna. I want to recognize the only white man in Naives, Onyocha Malam Bature ESV. Onyocha, a fellow, the honorary national secretary of the institution. Please a round of applause for him. The man that cheated death. Recognize you. Also, we have here with us the honorary national treasurer of the institution. SSO and Valiwa Hajia Fatima Oluokore. Please a round of applause for her. You're welcome, man. We recognize you. Also, here we have representing the Director of Lands, Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, SSO and Valiwa Great and Derek. Please a round of applause for her. You're welcome. We also want to inform us that this event is being streamed live on YouTube. Please use the search bar 2019 induction. And please let's not forget, you drove into this premises, you were given a card. Please, before leaving, after this event, please, you stop by the foyer of the reception of this hotel and revalidate the pass that you were given so that you don't get to pay any amount. My name is SSOV and Valua Frank with Akilome and Richard, the only SSOV and Valua that is a master of ceremony. Please, a round of applause for me if you're not angry with me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, before we move on to the next program, um, I would like to bring to the podium uh, Ashiwaju Dosu, Fatokun. He, he wants to make a comment. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. President, all protocols observed. Uh, once again, a round of applause for Jendu. If you want to discuss this paper, it's just like you want to discuss the problems of Nigeria. And you will not leave the, this place. But most of the problems are well known and well documented. First, uh, my approach to issues, when there are problems, I always try to lean on my faith my peace and faith. With this myriad of problems, I want first to count our blessings. If you compare essays, survey, and validation with other provisions, we have a lot to count and go for. When you talk of elasticity of a profession, you must give it to essays, survey, and provision. If you are not valuing you must be running around looking for tenants. Or you are with the oil pipe, pipe company trying to secure bills for compensation. Honestly, we cannot complain. And maybe because of this blessing, that has arisen some of our problems. Why the profession is very, very elastic? I think most of the problems, in fact, all the problems, we have to categorize. Those ones we have problem, controls over, and those ones we don't have control over. Of course, you always hear of a, a variable, variables. The one you variable that you can control, and those you cannot control. If you just oppose all the problems, but you can classify them into two. And the majority here is that 
most of these problems we have no control over. But again, we must deliberately adopt a positive and optimistic uh, attitude. Uh, challenges are for human beings. In fact, the day challenges cease, we are dead. So we must recognize that fact. It's very, very important. Now, looking at the issues, looking at the issues, in fact, there is a paradox. One paradox is that why the lecturer, the best speaker, was trying to make us understand that uh, the low, there is a low ratio between soldiers and, uh, and to, to the to population of Nigeria. But in terms of gainful employment, should we still wish for uh, accelerated uh, expansion? It's a dilemma. Because without expansion, there will not be development and progress. But at the same time, we must ensure that those that are qualified are gainfully gave, are employed. This is a paradox that I want to be put down. Now, taking some of the problems, the problem of regulation through our name, Essence of Real Badwa. Honestly, we have to discuss and tell ourselves some to own truth. And what do I mean by that? Do we have all the skills to govern what we are proclaiming, what we are professing to, to, to control, to control? It's, it's, an, it's, it's an issue. The lecturer brings them far to the issue. Okay, particularly in America. What we consider as success of being a population here is like the three major professions. You have the appraiser, which is the valuation. And of course, under that appraiser, you have different subdivisions. Management is a profession on its own. Why agency, that's what we call it here. They call it property broken over there. It starts on, on the soul. So we need to discuss frankly among ourselves which one we want, which one we want, do we want. If we want the profession to remain as it is, then we should look to the UK. There are the charter survey, general parties. I'm sure. Most of these problems, they through their grasping with it. Of course, as I said, we have issues that we can control on our own. The issue of effectiveness, the lecturer referred to some wishing wishy valuations, some that even divide principles and methods. These are areas which the institution can focus on. I don't know whether you have gotten this experience. When value properties, principle states that when there is copious evidence, market evidence of rent, of sales, you should use investment method. But I have this experience. Even where there is copious evidence, market evidence, most at times we resort to cost approach. Because given the basis which we know today, the yield, where we have for office properties, the two six and eight percent are central areas, uh, residential, possibly nine and ten percent. If you use that to capitalize capitalize event, you will not get what you call market uh, price. It's a problem. And this is a problem the institution can look into. And the problem is that we just receive from our 
you can tell people, okay, this should be the rate, this should be the capitalization rate, without doing our own original work. Uh, Mr. Gogo, it's Mr. Gogo here. There was a time he undertook a research exercise. I think one of the fallout of that research uh, exercise was that even your yield would be as low as 2%, there was a problem among the members. We need to be disabuse ourselves. And luckily, when it comes to valuation, some of the principles can be developed from, from, uh, uh, from the principles and from discussions. So we need a lot to do. And there is a lot of things happening, even in that area of valuation. Unfortunately, time will not allow us to. That will not allow us to. Okay, that's, that's all right. The president said I should not go into another lecture. <laughs> Again, but let us point out uh, some dimensions. We must admit that our board need to do more. Because when we are complaining that someone says some people are encroaching on our areas of competence, from the from day one, the issue of park management of landed properties has been on the list of what you can do. But today, if you look at the landscape, most of the sophisticated entities have been managed by foreign companies. And I believe that this is an area where the institution can even make money by drawing the attention to it. It's an extant problem which we should draw the attention to. It. And the government that was the president, we were about to tackle it, but some senior members advised that this is an issue that is best left for the government to do. But we are, we represent government. If we sensitize government to that this is a function that this institution should uh, have power over, then they will do something. So in terms of advocacy, we need more to do. Uh, we will go again. Uh, I want to draw attention to the public procurement law. Honestly, this law has operated to enhance this profession. Briefs, some briefs not all have been advertised. And from the quality of proposal that I've seen, some of our members uh, uh, submit. Honestly, uh, we have something to offer. And it's a, it's a way, it's an avenue to educate uh, the government and the uh, prospective clients. Uh, Mr. President, because of time, all the issues listed, you know, the various organs at the national committee level, you can charge some of these committees to follow up, list them. The one that relates to different committees, let them trade on them, let them work on them and let them suggest solutions for the National Council to deliberate upon. Uh, to that extent, I believe that some of these issues will you know, control some of the issues. Uh, my noble colleagues, I'm sure you are pregnant with questions, but because of time, I will advise whatever question you have, you have direct those questions to the Secretariat. I'm sure the management team and the council will know how to deal with it. Uh, once again, uh, we tell you, you know, nature has been very, very instructive. But again, we have to move ahead and ensure that we continue to do the best that you can do. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much, sir. Um, we have to quickly recognize a friend of the institution from the Nigerian Army. is a Brigadier General in the Nigerian Armed Forces, the Brigadier General Philip Yusuf. Can you please stand up for recognition from wherever you are? Honorable Commissioner for Finance from the Benue State Government, ably represented by Engineer Anthony Owuka. Can you please stand up for recognition too? Thank you very much for coming. Um, next on the program is nothing but presentation of the inductees. And to do I'll just give the microphone to the chairman, board of trustee of our institution, a person of SS of your and Valua Gesh Ensho. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, I stand by I stand by this time on existing protocols. Mr. President, please I want to commend this council. And um, I am happy that when I look at page 16 of this brochure, please, I want to reiterate that this concept of asking past presidents to present this lecture and this forum like this is what we really need. You see, Ojedo chose a topic which became a ripple. But today, I am happy I'm here. I'm happy those of us who were threatened by that topic are all here to see that we needed this topic at this induction uh, ceremony. Because no other, these are the people who should take these problems out and then come back for us to sit down together to solve it. So Mr. President, I am thanking you and saying that please let us institutionalize this presentation we are doing and let upcoming uh, past presidents who have gone right now, the next president knows that he has something to come and tickle us with by next year. So please, Mr. President, I thank you for this and let us keep this institution going. Thank you very much. Can we please put our hands together for the Chairman Board of Trustee once again? Yes, still on item number 11. Uh, I would like to have the privilege and honor of bringing to the podium the immediate past president of our institution, in person of Este Sovio and Valua, Bolaride J. Patuola Ajayi. You are welcome to the podium. So can we please put our hands together, please? The inductees, I expect that you do more than that. Thank you so much. Uh, my president, Sir Roland Aponta, let me stand on all established protocols. I want to congratulate every team for making the list. Those who could not make the list, due to some areas to put more effort should be encouraged by the fact that there is always room, a room for refueling as they prepare for the next edition. The assignment I have here is a very uh, uh, simple one. We have really done the major work uh, in the past one year and I want to announce to you that my president has permitted me to bring forward as the chairman of Privileges Committee those who have uh, gone through all the procedures. Uh, they have gone through the procedure and they have been found qualified to be awarded the prestigious status of fellow. And they have also been charged by the council of the institution. They have 
done excellently well. Uh, please, as I want to call your name, I would like you to come before the president so that he will take over the ceremony and uh, formally induct you. Uh, let me start without wasting time to call on Next, you face the president first because uh, you better get what you want to get first before <laughs> when you show to the public. <laughs> but I will call uh, Victor Olumakide Ojo. I'm sure you ought to have uh, gotten this. Uh, about 15 years ago, but it's better late than never. Assist of your and Badra Solomon Babi Dene following. Sorry, Assist of your and Badra George Kumi George. So please take that order so that when they are giving you your or certificate order. So you uh, please judge after Victor. Essence of your award, Adesumbo, Adebisi. Essence of your award, Lansa, Ikenna, Agaji. Essence of Ram Bada Urubo di Urubinga Shawe. Let us be brief about it. Essence of Ram Ambala Onaewu Ahaluola. Next is Essence of Ram Ambala Sunday Uruoli Kajola. Assets of your umbrella, Mihal Oladili and Zat. Assets of your umbrella, Ulu Wali Moses Oladende. Assets of your umbrella, Ulu Shola Kolari Abeji. Essence of your Ambalua Esther Oromidayo Tonte. You can shift forward so that uh, another line can be formed at the back. Essence of your Ambalua Grace Luak Equerbe. Essence of your Ambalua, Adenike Comfort Taiwo. Essence of your Ambalua, Uokoma, Anoyeri, Uwanko. Essence of your Ambalua, Folake Rashida, Udushida. Essence of your Ambalwa Aki Adimola Audu. Essence of your Ambalwa Opeyemi Christana Adikbomiri. Essence of your Ambalwa Uluwa Toyi Aposebi Ilori. Essence of your Ambalwa, Adenio Radetuji. Essence of your Ambalwa, Sandra Aouli Tita. Hey. 
Messes of the Ambara, Fagos, Ukanacho. Messes of the Ambara, or Napoli, or Nukoridi, or Gufile. Messes of the Ambara, Felix, Oka, Puri, Ikre. Estes of your Ambala and Anusio Kano. And last but not the least, Estes of your Ambala, Elizabeth Ayodili Oladili. Mr. President, I have before you. Uh, the list of fellowship inductees for 2019. Uh, for you to go on with the ceremony, I recommend it to you. Thank you. The chairman of this occasion. Permit me to stand on all of the established protocol as we do this business fast and briskly too. The reason is that we have invited so many guests and I've gotten a number of private party invitations. I don't want to wait any longer. The only thing is that none of them shall do this hotel. I don't know what they were avoiding. Noble colleagues, my incoming fellows, I had already applauded you and appreciated your service to the institution. But permit me to have maybe this serious admonition to give to you. The truth is that the back. But I think it's based on the fact that people do not understand what this position is all about. I've tried to ask around. If you see lawyers making trouble in MBA, it cannot be senior advocates. Because the position of a fellow has transferred you from being a member to a major stakeholder. That's what this position is all about. Even when you do not know, you make effort to know what is happening in the institution. So that you will be able to defend your institution. And I can also liken the position of fellows to that of life membership of an association. Life members on no account goes about to cancel their membership or threaten the integrity of the organization for which they are life members. I needed to mention this so that we stop this game. This game of bringing some young boys together and ignite them under names that are illegal. Such names like coalition and such names in our profession. Very soon, I've been told by my chairman of board of trustees and other council members, such names will be proscribed and belonging to them will become an offense that could be disciplined. I'm not threatening anybody, and I'm not saying anything different from what I said from the day I was inaugurated. That this administration will be a zero tolerance administration. And we are going to stand by it. Today you have a paper, just like as I admonish the associates. This content is loaded, and they are actionable. I've shown lawyers, and they say that if anybody after signing this, continue to violate it. And we have right to take action. In the past, we have overlooked such things. As fellows of our institution, be the major stakeholders you have volunteered to be. You know it's a privilege, it's not a right. That's why we have Privileges Committee preparing 
and processing you to become a fellow. Position of the highest membership grade of our institution. We expect you to act in that responsibility. And so I plead with you. Any organization that is perfect has stopped existing in this side of eternity. Yeah, there must be some default. And of course, whoever that marks or judge himself is bound to pass himself. So it's easier for others to judge you and observe what you are not doing well. But until when you get to the position of the man you are judging, you will not be able to understand all that is transpiring. So I plead with you, be stakeholders, be life members. Don't set up unnecessary pressure groups. The institution, the constitution, the code of conduct have made adequate provision for you to seek redress. Please go by that. As any other thing will soon become properly addressed as they are illegal action illegal associations, which are already in principle have been proscribed. Don't get yourself involved, no matter how much you are layered, to belong to such groups that are illegal in the institution. That's my admission for today. Once more, I'd like to congratulate you for going through the whole process. Ten years is the minimum requirement. In addition to it, it services to the institution services to human capital development, training and all that. And you have done all this. I think about 40 people applied and today we are only adopting 28. That shows that it's not uh, an easy thing to come by. And so, guide this thing you have gotten today, jealousy. Begin to operate in the realm of fellows. Don't go down. Don't reduce yourself from what God has helped you to become. Having said that, I am quickly going to take you through the oaths and affirmation of our leisure, which is very, very important. And at this point, you have right to step aside and say, look, I don't want to be committed. <laughs> Otherwise, after now, who will peace forever? I'll remain a fellow, a major stakeholder, and a permanent and a life member of this profession. Doing that will help us. And so we go with the goods. You will say, when I say I, you put your name, and then we go that way. I, I put your name with membership number, put the number. Do solemnly swear, and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers, and no other body, that as fellow of the institution, I will put service above self and act in the best interest of the profession of estate surveying and valuation at all times. That I will uphold the motto of the institution, honesty and devotion in all my endeavors. That I will at all times seek the development of the profession and the corporate existence of this institution. That I will abide by the rules of conduct. Let's repeat it. That I will abide by the rules of conduct and uphold and defend the objects of the constitution of the institution. So help me God. Even at this point, you can still withdraw. But once you put your attention, it has become a permanent contract and commitment. So freely, 
willingly and voluntarily sign this paper if you so agree. I have witnesses in the house, some family members who should help me to remind them you have made a commitment to be careful. Please, while, while, once you have signed, come back to where you are standing so that we will collect it that way. You have not already, you have not yet been inaugurated. The inauguration is coming after your commitment. Please come back and stand where you are. Come back and stand where you were. Okay, please, some fellows should get out of their beast if you are not a fellow, whether you are holding camera or not. It's not easy to stand in this line. Just clear your face. Non fellows should stay away unless you want us to consult you and lock you up and we will train you up to be a fellow. Please, some fellows should step aside. Step aside. We are ready to go on with our induction now. Please wait for the induction phase. Come back to your line. I want the confirmation that the forms are complete and intact. This is a serious business. Thank you very much, my first vice. The whole world, I have evidence that these ones are volunteered and made commitment to the fellows of the institution. Based on this evidence, and by the powers conferred on me, by the SS Surveyors and Valuers Registration Board of Nigeria Law, which gave power and birth to the Nigerian Institution of SS Surveyors and Valuers Constitution, I hereby induct the 28 prepared and pre-qualified associates of our institution into the membership grade of fellows of the institution in the name of God the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. We are going higher. Oh, my God. 
is that the institution have done a lot um, even though we have not gotten a resolution to this matter we are hopeful that there will be a resolution um, you know government is a very protracted regal process uh, you make a complaint today it may take them one year before they will uh, but as a professional body uh, all the infractions that have come uh, on the key areas of uh, professional functions of our institution, we have uh, actually complained. Uh, for example, the Federal and Land Revenue matter, where evaluation uh, uh, assignment was given to uh, a company that does not belong to estate surveyors and valuers, we declared in the newspaper that that was illegal, and we called on the organization to uh, reincide that decision or revise that action they took. Um, have they responded? We were shocked that instead of inland revenue collecting, correcting itself, they went ahead to uh, take us to court. Uh, 
uh, over that particular man matter. And the matter is in court. We are not going to comment uh, so much about it. But that and so many other places, like the case of um, uh, Code of Conduct Biru, we know what declaration of assets is doing to our nation today when it comes to relationship between the, uh, the uh, what is it called, the, um, the, the judiciary and then the executive arm of government. If only those in authority have allowed estate surveyors to play their role when it comes to assets declaration, maybe the Chief Justice of Nigeria will not be facing the challenges he's facing today. Because an estate surveyor who is, is his valuer will be interested in listing all his assets at once. And they will also be interested in verifying, confirming the position of those assets. But a situation where uh, the government is fighting corruption and government gives power to those declaring assets to value the assets and put a figure they like on the assets is a, is a big disservice to the nation. It's like um, someone willing to do something, but also willingly to do it uh, wrongly. And that's what is happening. We are saying the example of the CJN of the Federation should make all politicians, all pol office holders, to look for uh, valuers when they want to declare assets. Who will help them to do proper inventory of the assets? Who would help them to properly list the assets and also give it the correct value? So that nobody will face this kind of embarrassment and uh, situation we are facing today between the judiciary and the executive arm of government. Sir, is there any other country where uh, valuers determine the assets of public office holders? In all the countries of the world, in all the countries of the world, that is standard. What is valuation? Valuation is a professionally determined figure or value of an asset. And it's not everybody's show. That you bought an asset for 1 billion naira today, there is no guarantee that that asset will still give you 1 billion naira when you want to sell it after two or three years. Or there is no guarantee that you won't sell it much more than what that 1 billion naira. That's why it's important at any point when you want to refer to the value of that asset that you get the professional valuers, the estate surveyors and valuers, to determine what the value of that asset is. If we do that, the presence um, embarrassment between the judiciary and the executive arm of government will be non-existent. Is there okay, any sir. other public office order that allow uh, valuers to determine the asset? The there are case? some of them did, exactly. but we are saying we are saying no. I don't have uh, the mandate of the of the man and uh, his uh, valuer to tell you who, uh, who he is. But I'm telling you that I'm knowledgeable enough to know that as president of the institution that some of our members valued some of the assets of people in government. And we are not saying that it is the root cause of the present problem. But we are saying that is the permanent solution to the problem we are facing in the nation today okay, if a valuer did his work. Okay, sir, please, the guest uh, lecturer during the lecture said um, the your institution or estate surveyors are having, it, are having serious challenges here in the country. What are you doing as an institution, you know, to remain relevant in the scheme of things as regarding your institution? Advocacy, shouting on top of our voices, saying federal land revenue don't give valuation to non-estate surveyors and valuers. Federal Ministry of Works don't appoint non-valuers to carry out compensation valuation and such like arms of government. And of course, we are engaging professionals from other professional groups. When they want to infringe, we are engaging them. Today, you saw the APBN president in our midst. It is strategic so that he will also help us at the level of uh, association of professional bodies to advise other professionals to face their business. It's true that we are looking for money in Nigeria. But you don't go to do the wrong thing. When a carpenter begins to perform surgery, something is wrong with the system. So allow people to do that for which they are trained and for which they are certified to practice. What efforts is your institution making? Because I know one of your, one of your core mandates is housing development. To contribute to the housing development.
Quite a lot. Quite a lot. In the front seat of Advocacy for Housing, Nigerian Institution of Estate Surveyors and Valuers is well seated there. And again, we keep telling people, housing is not only about the design, the construction. There is what they call housing economics, which derives from ability to know what do you need in housing. How many number of housing units do you know? need? What type of housing units do you need? Do you have off-takers? Do you have those who will occupy those houses when you finish? That resides with the estate surveyors and valuers. The simple reason is that as an estate surveyor and valuer, and people know me for that, in my office on weekly basis, on daily basis, there are innumerable number of calls that come. And we now analyze them and categorize them. How many people are calling to say we need two bedroom flats? How many are calling to say we need detached houses? And that will be the information that the government should rely on in deciding which housing projects are they getting, going to get involved in. Of course, I can also tell you that a number of our members are also active uh, developers. We have today seated in our midst the former chairman of Abuja branch, who is also the chairman of Cytec Estates. I don't know where, whether you know about Cytec Estates. It's one of the biggest estates, state, a growing estate in town. They are also into building material production and all manner of things. He is an estate surveyor and valuer, and it's part of our practice to even go into housing development. So we are doing a lot. We are advising the government, we are shaping the policy and program, but the problem is that we have not been given our rightful place of importance in housing. For me, if housing must survive in Nigeria, an estate surveyor and valuer must be minister of housing. One more question. Yes. Um, it appears that uh, there's no legal framework that provide, make it mandatory for estate surveyors to, det to determine asset, asset of public office holders. Why don't you sponsor a deal to guarantee it, to make it mandatory? You know, law and uh, acts of parliament cannot state everything that he intends into it. So it's at the doorstep of the interpreters of the law to implement it properly. If the law establishing code of conduct have said that every public officer must declare his assets and then did not say that he should himself put the value of the asset. And of course, another law that is in the nation, the estate surveyors and valuer registration board of Nigeria have said that only estate surveyors and valuers can place a value on assets. Do you need a fourth or fifth or twentieth law for you to know that when you want to state the value of your asset, you need the valuer who have been empowered by a sister law to the law you are obeying to do that valuation. So these are excuses we take and it's simple. It's like somebody who says that you must provide health care or a law that says you must provide primary health care. He didn't write in it that only doctors should perform surgery. But I know that you asking this question, when you need a surgery, you won't come to me because you know I will send you to Great Beyond as fast as possible. You still look for doctors, even when the law establishing primary health care did not say that you must go to doctor every time you have need. But you go to doctors because you know they are the people. The same thing we are saying, estate surveyors and valuers are the managers of assets and we are the valuers of assets. Make no mistake for any public officer, from president to the last person in public service, trying to put value of his asset. It's illegal, it's unacceptable, and it can only happen in a nation like our, uh, our own country, Nigeria. And we are saying, put a stop to this. Stop embarrassing yourselves, those in public office. Use estate surveyors and valuers to help you in processing your assets declaration in the area of valuation, in the area of inventory, in the area of listing. The problem we have today is that somebody forget, forgot to list some of his assets. Is that not the problem? If there was a valuer whose job is to do inventory, to do listing of assets, he won't have this problem because we would have asked. Now that you have listed 
the building assets, the vehicle assets. Do you have account, account sir? That's the work of a state surveyor. And the man will declare, yes, I have so-so, I have so-so. That way, we would have saved ourselves all the embarrassment. By the way, I know that it's a legal matter, and I'm not in a position to determine whether what is going on is right or wrong. I leave that for the lawyer, lawyers. But I'm saying, let the state surveyors and valuers be involved in asset listing, in asset uh, inventory, and in asset valuation. Don't ask me more because I won't answer you. Thank you very much.